Okay, I'd like to talk about a the, one of the sickest jokes ever played on humanity, and it's not a uh, it's not a a scam, and it's certainly not a conspiracy. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. It's, it's just human stupidity. Um, there's an ancient premise that existed a very very long time ago amongst the Greeks called atomism. Okay, and it exists again today. Atomism was destroyed thousands of years ago by the Greek Platonists, but it's been uh, revived. It was revived uh, back in the early uh, 1920s. Most of it is due to uh, Western empiricism and existentialism. Talking about the principle of the electron, I'm going to try to stick something, a huge topic into you know, a few minutes here. You know, particle-free induction of power transmission in a vacuum through, uh, like, 10 feet of lead, for example, is an absolute fact. This isn't my principle. <sighs> power transmission has nothing to do with particles. Okay? The whole principle of quantum, i.e. quanta, i.e. quantity, is nothing other uh, than an attributional expression of existential uh, atomism. It is absolute, pure Greek atomism in denotation, definition, and connotation. Um, let's talk about the principle of the electron, for example. Um, let's talk about some of the greats of science like Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, Nikola Tesla, C.P. Uh, uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. All of these people gave you 100% of the electrical power grid today. These people's works are so complicated that your friggin' brains would explode if you were to even read like some of Oliver Heaviside's or uh, Proteus uh, Steinmetz's works, much less uh, James Clerk Maxwell. Uh, even the inventor, not the inventor, excuse me, the discoverer, J.J. Uh, Thompson, of the electron, denied, until he was offered a Nobel Prize, the notion that the electron existed as a particle. The notion of an electron as a particle, even by its discoverer of J.J. Thompson, he considered that to be, quote, absurd. Until he was offered great fame and the Nobel Peace Prize, in which he went along. So, let's take a look at the electron and what you think uh, an electron might be, because this is one of the most, you know, sick, nonsense uh, abominations that exists in the human uh, concept. We'll talk about the electron microscope if we've got time, or I'll make another video about it. Let's first talk about what atomism, atomism is, or uh, atomon. As a natural philosophy developed in the ancient uh, Greek traditions, atomism theorized that nature consisted of fundamental, fundamental particles, or atoms, unlike, uh, you know, modern scientific theory, uh, excuse me, like uh, modern scientific uh, atomic theory, philosophical atoms come in uh, finite varieties and shapes and sizes, indestructible, immutable, and uh, surrounded by voids. In other words, the very premise of uh, atomism is that Mother Nature, you know, quote-unquote, uh, is an insane crack whore with a giant bag full of magical particles, and everything in the universe are these little particles, and each little particle is made up of quarks and <laughs> anti-quarks, more particles. So when you cut the particles apart, you'll find more particles, and if there's something smaller than that, there'll be more particles <laughs> underneath that. And this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the discovery of the principle of the electron, J.J. Thompson denied forever that the electron was a, a particle. Electricity is utterly a mass-free phenomenon. As mentioned by many, including Dr. Wilhelm Reich in his uh, book Cosmic Superimposition, mass has no logical or theoretical place in electrical units at all. Of particle-based conceptions of it are absolutely impossible. There is no mass. There are no particles in TEM, transverse electromagnetic induction. Now, as far as the induction of power, I don't know if you know much about wireless power, but uh, power transmission has nothing at all to do with particles. You can take a perfect vacuum and still do inductive transfer of power. It has nothing to do with particles. Magnetism is not a particle. Instantaneous action at a distance has never been defined by modern science. The word field has never been defined. It has certain explicative uh, descriptions as defined by modern science, but it has no denotative uh, explanation. So, the very notion of a particle and uh, the, uh, is absolutely absurd uh, as so far as that power transmission or that electromagnetism or that light, you know, photons or a particle is equally absurd, you know, uh, that uh, notion that electron is a particle. Um, uh, 
Uh, the actual notion that came from the uh, earliest quant, uh, quant, uh, quantum physics is that came from the notion that the photon is, uh, you know, uh, as Einstein, the idiot Einstein called it, das Lichtwort, uh, or light quanta. You know, the idiot Einstein said, we're faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality, separately particle wave theory, and neither one of them fully explains the phenomena of light. But together they do. They actually, of course, would actually see Depending on the frequency and wavelength, here we have uh, uh, transverse uh, wave phenomena tra traveling. Of course, it doesn't travel through phase because uh, space is never a terminal uh, for any uh, sort of field. No field has ever terminated in space because space is not a uh, terminus. You know, they would see uh, wave phenomena, and then for a while, uh, between uh, uh, wavelengths, they would actually see a quote-unquote particle phenomenon. Those are just dielectric pulses. That's why the shorter the wavelength, the higher the power in EV. I mean, this, this premise uh, came from das Lichtquant, you know, quantity, this wave-particle duality. The very premise of what the term duality means belies a stupidity. So any time someone talks about the duality, they're actually describing something that they don't understand. Duality is nothing other than the concept that you cannot differentiate uh, principle from attribute. It's like talking about four different things or three different things when you're talking about Water, for example, like over here we got water, over here we got steam, and over here we got ice. They're three different things. It's like, no, that's not the case, you idiot. It, it's all water, steam, steam, uh, ice, and uh, and liquid. Uh, they're all the exact same thing. They're the uh, they're the uh, hydrous oxide molecule, H two O. It's the same sort of pathetic human stupidity that no, that believes that there are actually uh, particles traveling through wires. Now, Oliver Heaviside, the guy that gave us much of our electrical grid, and Tesla, too, and Charles Proteus Steinmetz, and J.J. Thompson, the discoverer of the electron, they all denied that the notion of electron existed as far as a particle. You know, the notion of an electron particle was absolutely an absurd heresy of these, of these people. They stated outright. Nikola Tesla, interview in 1928, said, The whole subject matter, in fact, Dr. Tesla holds the view are startlingly original. He disagrees with the accepted atomic theory of matter and does not believe in the existence of an electron as pictured by science, Tesla says. To account for its apparent, uh, apparently small mass, science conceives of the electron as a hollow sphere, a sort of bubble. Such uh, a bubble could exist in a medium as in a gas or liquid because of its internal pressure, not altered by def uh, deformation, but as supposed, the internal pressure of an electron is due to the repulsion of electric mass, the slightest conceivable deformation must result in the destruction of the bubble, just to mention another improbability. His articles uh, from a famous prophet of science looks in the future by Popular Science uh, Monthly. Uh, Nikola Tesla says again, my, art, my ideas regarding the electron are at variance and odds with those generally entertained. Um, it goes on to say why it's impossible for an electron to exist as a particle. I mean, the notion that there are actually particles running through wires, like uh, you know, uh, beads inside of a rain stick that you shake, and you know, there are particles flowing from one end to another, is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, wireless power induction over great distances in a vacuum alone, you think would negate this fact? But no, no, no. We still hold the notion that uh, electrons are particles. They're nothing other than dielectric discharges. I know you're going to ask me about the electron microscope, and that's actually an easy one to explain. I'll talk about it in part two of this video. Um, even the idiot Einstein, early on, before he actually came up, uh, and the guy's in, in a pure idiot. I mean, everything he had, he invented nothing. Uh, he got the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for uh, um, the photoelectric effect, which is based on correct observations and totally incorrect conclusions. He states, in the theoretical treatment of these electrons, we're faced with difficulty electrodynamic theory by itself is unable to give account for their nature, for since electrical mass constituting the electron will necessarily be scattered under the influence of their mutual repulsion, unless thereby forces of another kind operating between them, uh, the, nature, the nature of which has hitherto remained obscure to us. Basically, he's saying we don't understand what the electron is, and the very principle of it is still unknown. And that was a quote from him uh, from 1916. Uh, 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 under Einstein on electrons uh, in his book Relativity by Random House Publisher in 1916. He stated that in 1915 or 14, I believe. Um, to describe an electron, this is another person, describe an electron as a negatively charged body is equivalent to saying that there is an expanding, contracting particle. There is no such condition in nature as a negative charge, nor are there negatively charged particles. Charge and discharge are opposing conditions, as filling and emptying or compressing and expanding are opposites. That's uh, from Walter Russell. 
This is true. There are really only two uh, principles uh, that actually govern the nature of the universe. Uh, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. Force and motion, of course, one principle, two princ I mean, one principle with uh, two attributes, and the other one is inertia and acceleration. Charge, discharge, centripetals, uh, uh, centrifugal. Um, in Mother Nature, the nature of the universe is divinely simplex, but it's not very simple for the common person to apparently understand, because we've uh, developed this convoluted ideology that the universe is just a giant bag of magical particles, and you know, that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, there are no such things as electrons flowing through wires. The, the principle of the electron obviously exists, but there's absolutely no such nonsense as an electron particle. There's certainly no such thing as a, a, rust, uh, a rust electron. These are nothing other than uh, quantifications of uh, dielectric discharges. J.J. Uh, Thompson uh, developed uh, the principle of the ether atom. Of course, J.J. Thompson, while a, a studious inventor himself, was not all that smart. Uh, his writings are incredibly smart, but he himself thankfully denied for a very long time the notion of electron was a particle. Uh, ideas of Faraday into the electronic corpuscle, the individual uh, indivisible unit, one corpuscle terminated into one faradic tube of force. This uh, quantifies as one coulomb. The uh, corpuscle is not an electron; it is a constituent of what today is known incorrectly as the electron, quote unquote. This is from the discoverer of the electron. He denied for a long, long time until he was offered the Nobel Peace Prize, fame, and money. I was like, okay, well, it's a particle. He denied on and on and on. That the, that the principle of the electron, but he was forced by other atomists in his field. Oh yeah, it's a particle, so he discovered a particle. This is the uh, charge-carrying particle. Oh, uh, no it's not, no it's not. Yeah, it is, yeah it is, we're going to give you a Nobel Peace Prize, we're going to give you a lot of money and fame. Okay, okay, that sounds good, you know, it's, it's a particle. <laughs> so, the very discoverer of the electron did not believe that it was a particle, and of course he was right, it is not a particle. Let's go on to part two of this, and we'll give you some more quotes from uh, Tesla, Eric Dollard, Charles Brody Steinmetz, and Oliver Heavysaw on the notion of the electron particle nonsense.